the average CTR for retargeted ads is uh, 3.7% compared to uh, uh, 0.07% for display ads. So um, they're both, of course, uh, both retargeting and display are display ads, but uh, uh, in common uh, talk among uh, people working in this industry, we talk about retargeting or audience targeting. So retargeting is engaging people who have been uh, engaging with you in one or the other way. And while audi uh, audience targeting is really acquisition, uh, uh, talk to, uh, getting in touch with people who've never heard of you before in general. Over 40% of uh, paid display spent in 2019 was on retargeting. So uh, it's a, quite a, a, share, a big share of uh, uh, traffic. Uh, videos are shared 1,200% uh, uh, more than text and links combined. Uh, 70 to 80% of users ignore sponsored search results. So uh, that says something why you need to reach them for with display. YouTube mobile ads receive fewer attention, 85% uh, uh, receive viewer attention 83% of the time. So the, they are lesser seen. Over 70% of YouTube watch time uh, comes from views on mobile devices. So it's really a mobile uh, slash social channel. And 88% of consumers who search for a local business on a uh, mobile phone uh, call or visit their business within a day. And also we're gonna talk about that today. Um, so why are we only talking about Google in this sense? Uh, it's not that I'm a big uh, agent of Google, um, but they do have a market share in the display market, uh, I believe for 50% of global um, display uh, advertising and uh, Google and Facebook uh, combined have about 80% of the global display market in, on their hands. So the other players are really quite small and filling out, uh, well, not small websites, but a small portion of the total traffic. So uh, it's more like, uh, and Google has a really user-friendly interface. So it's more like, hey, if you can't get it uh, working on Google, well, probably you won't get it working uh, somewhere else, neither. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, uh, network and uh, R2B platforms and demand side platforms. Uh, the real-time bidding scene is uh, mostly compared to uh, the daily uh, stock and money markets. That it's all real-time connected quite fast. Uh, all the basic contracts uh, in the real-time bidding market are, I believe, in 0 0.5 seconds. So. Um, Within, a, within say half a second, uh, uh, all data have to be interchanged between about 10 parties before showing you the right ad in the right position on that spot. Uh, and it has to be checked with, hey, if you, uh, you as, a, as, a, as a user of uh, the internet um, have been seen somewhere else or, or somebody wants to specifically target you. So it's a really complex world, the real-time bidding world. Google also um, participates in the, in this world through her, her um, double click exchange. Um, that's a Google product, double click. Um, other uh, big names are here uh, mentioned. Uh, Amazon is now the last few years really grown quite hard, but uh, Pubmedic, Rubicon, Yahoo is a big one, AppNexus and AppBright, for example. Um, and on both parties, you have a supply side platform that's for the publishers and you have a demand side platform. They help the advertisers to uh, set up the right advertising uh, advertisements. So for ads or for the demand side are advertisements, while for the publishers on the supply side, there are placements, uh, uh, space on their website or app that they can sell. Um, so, to skip the um, complexity of this world, uh, we just focus on the Google products. Uh, but easy do it yourself uh, programs who have a broader reach than uh, the Google only network or for example, Advil or Chusel.com. 
So what can you expect uh, concerning uh, the CTR? CTR is one of the well, two most uh, important metrics when managing a display campaign. There are a lot of other things you uh, want to optimize for, but once it's running, that's, that's the one of the first thing you want to take a look at. Well, CTRs, of course, calculate the per thousand views because uh, most uh, rate, uh, ratings, most uh, calculations or pricing is set in uh, eCPM, so the eff effective cost per mil, per thousand impressions. So CTR is a percentage of the thousand views, one CPM. So if your CTR is dot, uh, five percent then you get five clicks out of every 1000 views if your cpm so that's what you really pay uh, is two dollars for each thousand views uh, then you divide it by those five clicks you get a, a cost per click of 40 cents well display ads have usually uh, the lowest conversion rates due to their position in the customer journey they're uh, all the way in the front. People don't know you yet and they, um, um, they've they never heard of your brand or your product. So uh, you need a lot of uh, exposure to reach them. So if you uh, watch uh, or look at your uh, standard Google Analytics configuration, you see a, a low last click attribution because people will do other things. Uh, they will uh, remember your website and will come back in a week or they will visit through a Google search um, and come uh, in as a paid search or paid uh, organic search traffic, or they type in the URL in their uh, browser and they come in as uh, direct traffic. Um, but mostly they won't convert from that single banner view or banner click. Um, so usually when you um, evaluate display advertising campaigns, you will see, um, besides, of course, the traffic coming in straightly, what you can uh, measure from the from the display, display campaign, you will also see, if you done, have done it right, a rise in direct traffic. Uh, overall, the conversion rate, uh, if nothing else changed, uh, on the overall on the website will um, also be higher. So it will impact on your conversion rate. And um, branded search uh, will have uh, uh, gotten more vol volume. So more people typing in your brand name or your product name. Of course, this is not with a few hundred dollars. Uh, this is the case, but uh, if you start uh, spending a few thousands of dollars, uh, that will be the case. Um, because if you have a CPM of say two, uh, two dollars and you have a, a ten thousand dollars spent um, you get two million views or excuse me five hundred thousand views so uh, it calculates fast uh, large numbers and depending how what's the cap the cap is the how many impressions you give to um, to each user uh, in a certain time frame, for example, if your cap is four in a, in a month, then uh, you want to show four ad impressions to the same user. And after that, they stop showing the ad. Uh, so that also uh, tells something about how many uh, u unique users you will reach for your budget. Um, in this image here on the right, it's an image from Banner Snack. It's a really uh, nice uh, banner creation tool. In a, in, a, in a few seconds, you have made a really nice banner with all kinds of ad sizes, but most importantly, also HTML5 banners. We're going to talk about that also in a few slides. Um, but here is both, um, say, retargeting and audience targeting display campaigns are combined. And like we've seen with the stats, that uh, is a big difference. Like uh, you have two persons, uh, the average American and the richest American. Well, then you get a strange number. Something like this happens uh, also with these stats. Um, so for audience targeting, well, uh, the former slide said about that uh, 0.07%. Um, anything from uh, 
0.1% until 0.25%, um, you should you put your expectations there. So, uh, Once you go into the dashboard of Google uh, Ads, you will see uh, these goals you can choose. Uh, sales leads, website traffic, product and brand consideration, brand awareness and reach, app promotion, local visit store promotions, or create something for yourself. And after each uh, choice, another set of options is um, shown to you. For example, if you click on the app promotion, um, option you'll get two two choices that uh, do you want to go for a uh, new app installs or do you want to have uh, in-app engagement so people who already, already installed your app do you, do you want them to uh, to encourage to uh, conduct a certain behavior like doing a purchase uh, for product and brand consideration where uh, by accident has now the focus on this uh, slide um, if you choose that option you get um, um, the possibility of highlight ads that are ads that are not uh, sending traffic to your website or uh, your app but uh, keeping that on the uh, google assets but do interact a lot with your advertisement so each option has its uh, pros and contrasts and you should take a look around for yourself hey uh, what's there we are talk about to uh, to talk about it quite in general but uh, once you're running through it uh, click on all the options you see because um, google will try to persuade you by the default to offer a default option that well, co will cost you a lot of money So what kind of uh, display banner types are there? Well, in general, there are four uh, display uh, or banner types. The first is the old fashioned display banner that are uh, mostly animated GIFs. Then uh, you have HTML5 banners. I think they're now in the market for three or four years or so. Um, and you upload them by a zip file. Um, they're faster, easier to make, and uh, uh, less uh, maintainable uh, maintenance. Um, then you have a new product of Google, or new, but it's I think, two years now in the market, but it's responsive banners. It's a, it's a mix and match. <coughs> mix and match type uh, thing while multivariate testing. We're not gonna talk about uh, that ad type uh, in a few slides. And then you have the light box ad, which I just uh, mentioned. If you want to <coughs> have some uh, inspiration, well, you can go to this uh, website, mode.com. And here you have mode ad search and you can uh, click any brand name. Okay. Zero, for example. And you can uh, view what kind of ads they've made the last, say, five to 10 years, I believe. So uh, you have to check for uh, recency, but um, you get an idea. So it's really nice uh, database to look, uh, to get inspiration. Um, if you want to create banners, of course, there are a lot of uh, tools uh, that can help you, like the uh, default uh, Adobe programs or Canva. But uh, if you really need to do it a lot and fast, uh, Banner Snack and Stamp are really two uh, great tools um, to use. So what uh, comes around with uh, designing a great banner, of course, uh, animation in with, with, with uh, let's see, with diligence or with uh, some some animation, but um, 
of course, a logo value proposition, call to action. Important to keep branding consistent and color consistent, uh, both in the image or the image, the banner itself, as with uh, where people land and your branding, overall branding uh, sphere. Um, in general, um, what kind of market you uh, uh, you serve and both um, what your message is, like uh, Nike is a premium um, a sports shoe brand, of course, um, <clears throat> and they <clears throat> create an ad with a uh, clear uh, pricing mechanism. So it's quite a, a unique. Uh, Salesforce, but is a big market, or big. Uh, it's a premier uh, marketing automation tool of Salesforce. Um, and focus just on the content and uh, well, the cartoon is just their image. I think on the lift, the uh, General Motors company uh, banner is uh, aimed at this quite a specific group because there's a lot of information in this banner. Um, and uh, usually I would not uh, advise anyone to make, create this kind of banner. Of course, the, uh, all the small uh, characters below the call to action probably are legal disclaimers they have to make. Uh, but uh, the pricing setup uh, is interesting. They, uh, they offer free numbers, uh, the purchase allowance, and a lot of details about uh, what kind of uh, vehicle they offer. Um, so I can assume this would be a retargeting better to uh, their former clients who were already driving a General Motors um, SUV, uh, but of certain age, like uh, cars with 10 years old, old or something. Uh, then I can imagine this kind of banner. In any other case, not. Um, Google Display makes it very easy to A-B test. And... Uh, we talked about conversion rate optimization uh, in, I believe, in the second session that we had with each other. Um, also, I said that I mentioned that it's not only on page, but also every step of the journey. Well, this is a really easy part of the journey that you can optimize. Um, it's relatively cheap. I mean, you just have to create another uh, creative and uh, copy the campaign and uh, uh, everything will go uh, by itself. Um, and because of the volumes of views your banners will get, uh, it's also quite um, trustworthy data in that sense that uh, when the difference uh, start to stack, you don't need thousands of visitors on your website or something. These are thousands of views quite easily made. So uh, really worth the trouble of uh, A-B testing. Then we have responsive ads. This is a relatively new, um, but not new, like wow, new, but a new, uh, uh, one of the latest big changes to the platform. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> And what does Google do? Um, well, of course, you uh, give in um, a final destination URL where they have to go if they click your ad. You type in five or six, five variations of your headline, one variation of a long headline, then five variations of uh, the description. Um, then you can upload as many images as you want and videos, of course, ho hosted on YouTube so they can. Uh, and uh, so both landscape as uh, uh, vertical um, images and some logos also uh, vertical and uh, horizontal. And what Google does, uh, does they, um, they mix and match the ad and they're trying to find the best variation of all those ingredients that you have uploaded. And the results are amazing. 
Overall, these ads uh, perform more than 20 times better than usually default HTML5 ads. So uh, the smallest advice I can give you, at least test with these ads. You have a little less control over branding, um, which you will get a lot of uh, return uh, value in return. So think about it, consider, uh, really consider it. What are the default ad sizes for uh, animated GIFs and HTML5 uh, banners? Well, by far the biggest uh, um, sizes on desktop are 300 by 250 and 728 by 90, and on mobile 300 by 50 and 300 by 100. Um, I don't have to mention that the earlier uh, uh, Named uh, responsive ads are uh, constantly uh, responsive, so that they they react to the screen size and the position Google has uh, running. So you don't with responsive ads, you don't have to think about ad sizes. Google does that for you. This is only when you create banners. Then uh, the lightbox ad, which we uh, talked about by the introduction of the goals uh, for product uh, interactions, uh, somewhat similar to responsive ads. So you use all your assets across uh, you have across Google brands. So your uh, Google my, my business uh, ratings and uh, business details there, uh, your, your videos on YouTube, uh, some images you have uploaded, etc. Um, but the primary goal is to uh, create ad engagement and not traffic to your goal. So, for example, if you have a really nice technical uh, product with a lot of uh, features or you have an app and you want to screen, uh, so show them some screenshots uh, before they click on uh, going to the app store to your website, uh, that would, this would be something worth trying. Uh, and you pay per cost per engagement and not per view. So can be interesting. Well, the targeting options we're going to discuss in the coming slides, affinity, so uh, that's the most broad uh, targeting method within uh, Google. You reach users based on what they're passionate about or their habits and interests. Custom audiences, or you can create actually anything you want. Um, Uh, detailed demographics, uh, which is based on long-term uh, life facts, so uh, age, if they have children, uh, are parents or not, if they have bought a home, home uh, income, income uh, position, uh, stuff like that. Uh, life events, we're going to discuss about which users when they're uh, in the midst of the important life milestone, like marriage or uh, starting a business, etc. Um, In-market segments are uh, users that have recently uh, searched for certain products. So this is very uh, interesting. This is exactly what it is. People who are now or recently have searched for specific products and you can uh, engage with them through an ad. For, so uh, imagine somebody is uh, uh, typing a Google search query, something like, um, Uh, marketing automation software or compare marketing automation software vendors. Uh, at that moment, uh, you can show up uh, while they're searching. They haven't even visited your site somewhere else. You can show your ad like, hey, uh, we're also a marketing automation vendor. Uh, come visit us. So that's in market targeting. Of course, remarketing, we choose that have interacted with your business some uh, way or the other. Customer match, you can upload email addresses, phone numbers, I believe, and uh, I believe also Google uh, customer IDs, um, client IDs uh, to reach your existing customers based on your CRM data. Of course, uh, this is a GDPR thing, so uh, beware. Same with remarketing. I'm just here to explain uh, what the possibilities of the Google network are, not uh, to consult you 
specifically what's good for your situation. Um, similar audiences uh, reach new users with similar interest to your website, visitors or existing customers or any other list for that reason. Besides targeting, you have also the negative option content exclusions. You have three categories, digital content labels, sensitive content and content type. Um, well, digital content labels, of course, uh, has to do with uh, age and uh, um, suitable for uh, adults only, for example. Sensitive contact, it's a tragedy, conflict, sensitive social issues, profanity, sexual suggestive, sens sensational, shocking, a content type. I, in all the campaigns I'm running, uh, I work here with these content exclusions because, uh, for example, park domains uh, or uh, below the fold ads uh, or live streaming or embedded. <coughs> These are some of the uh, things I put off by default. So I have to, I have to click opt in here because it's an opt out system. Um, so be aware that uh, if you don't uh, do your work here, your ads will be shown all over the place to your target group in any unfilled. Then here you can. Uh, Target your audience that we just, just discussed. Uh, demographics, interests are here, uh, what they're actually uh, researching or planning. And if you click on one of the options, you 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 will go to a, a browser menu, um, or browser menu, uh, you will go into a tree menu deeper and deeper. So, um, Excuse me. Um, and you'll see a all, all long list with uh, options. And of course, you can search for your thing. But uh, something like uh, the fashion, you will see uh, five or six different things regarding uh, fashion or any other industry for that matter. Well, um, also here, you can connect to your remarketing uh, audiences or similar audiences. You can combine here your audience that we uh, talked about or create your custom audiences. Um, so this is where, where a big part of your uh, metric for your Google Ads, Google Display Ads happens. But demographics, we already talked about. Content targeting, this uh, is a different kind of um, targeting and you can uh, use it in combination with the other methods, of course, you make you at narrower and narrower. But um, keywords are just uh, advertising uh, around content that carry your selected keywords. Also, of course, you can leave all all the option other options open, um, and um, choose only, for example, for uh, uh, keyword targeting. Same with topics. Uh, it's more broad, you go uh, closer to the affinity uh, targeting. But placement, uh, you can uh, point out specific apps or websites where you want to advertise. So you can go really specific uh, here. Well, live events, start a business, um, start a business soon if they're uh, working towards it. Uh, graduation soon, recently graduated, recently started a new job, starting a new job soon, uh, getting married soon, getting recently married, moving soon, recently moved, purchasing home soon, recently purchased, retiring, retired soon. Um, Well, three examples of creating a custom intent audiences. So we talked about already about intent audiences that are audience that are now searching on Google, or now, but uh, within the, the last, uh, I believe last two weeks it is, uh, searching for Google for specific queries. Um, what you can uh, do, you can, uh, for example, 
you know that uh, certain uh, keywords confer better for your uh, company. Well, you can uh, uh, target the people who search with that specific keywords and with those specific keywords. Or um, you know what your best selling products are. And you can uh, target that kind of people who search for that kind of products. Um, or people who are looking for your competitor. You can uh, uh, retarget them or target them uh, with your ads. Examples of retargeting segments, uh, you can go um, as wild as you want uh, 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 with retargeting. There's a, a link to a blog post with 100 examples of retargeting segments based on Google Analytics. Uh, I just mentioned here a few uh, to give you some inspiration. Of course, visit a certain web page, click on a specific button. If you have enough traffic, that can be really interesting. Um, retarget anybody who has had an order value between uh, X and I, or repeat customers. Just so uh, people who have uh, bought last week uh, item X of you, uh, give them a banner about uh, related item I. So. Um, then you have the op option within retargeting uh, with retar RLSA, RLSA, retargeting list for search ads. Um, and you can retarget website visitors in Google search. So um, how does this work? Somebody comes uh, to your website, for example, for your email or some uh, social media post. And um, your website is about um, a lawyer firm for divorce cases and um, then they type in a slightly related uh, search query in Google so not a, a divorce lawyer uh, near Amsterdam or something like that but more um, divorce or a lawyer or what makes a good lawyer whatever uh, related uh, query you can uh, target those people with a search ad. Well, you would normally not advertise on those keywords. You can make a specific campaign that you advertise on those keywords, but only for people who have been on your website before. So that is retargeting list for search ads. Then we go to YouTube. Uh, well, YouTube is, uh, we talked about the, with the social media stats, I believe uh, after Facebook, the biggest social ne media network, if you call it social media uh, in the world. Um, but they have a few uh, ad types that you can uh, uh, work with for yourself. They have also other uh, types like the must have that's on the homepage of YouTube with the big uh, thing up, but then you have to contact the sales team. So I don't, won't discuss it here. Um, but you have, of course, display ads on the right side of uh, the feature video. Overlay ads, we have seen, that's, I think, the oldest uh, types we've seen on the YouTube advertising. Skippable video ads, I, I see them a lot. Non-skippable video ads, I see them uh, more and more. Um, Bumper ads, um, non skippable, all devices, max six seconds are quite short. And uh, sponsored cards, that's uh, after uh, or during the, the, the video, they will sh be shown. These ad types, you can use them, some of them only for certain types of campaigns, other with, you can combine them within campaign types. And so we're now going to talk about campaign types, or first YouTube KPIs. Um, once you're running uh, YouTube ads, you will see a lot of stats, uh, and it's difficult to uh, to get a feeling with it compared to uh, normal uh, display campaigns. But um, well, here's the mo most important metrics listed. Impressions, how many times uh, your thumbnails were shown to viewers on YouTube through registered impressions. Uh, but so not they, uh, they saw an, 
something of your app, but they of your ad, your video. Um, um, often uh, viewers watch the video uh, after seeing thumbnail. Unique viewers estimate number of people who watch your content with selected uh, data range views, number of limited views of your channels or videos, views for impressions, uh, watch time. And same with uh, watch time for impressions. Um, and you also get a metric uh, E CPV, effective cost per view. And a view is somebody who, who watched your ad longer than uh, 30 seconds. So um, be aware. Well, YouTube targeting options. You have all the options that you also have in the, on the Google, of, uh, almost all, all the options that you also have on the Google Display um, configuration. And besides that, you can uh, target creators or channels. Think about competitors, brands, or uh, membership organizations, or events where you went to, or uh, your target audience and goes to. Um, and you can target their search history. It uh, works something other than uh, intent, intent targeting, uh, but it's really quite interesting for YouTube advertisements. Then you have a type called a YouTube video sequence campaign. Uh, you have to set it up quite uh, in the beginning. So you, uh, once you go in that flow, uh, when you select a new goal, um, that's not flexible uh, flow, let's put it that way. Uh, what's a really interesting option, you can uh, uh, make a sequence of uh, you, so storytelling by, with videos. For so example, if you have an app or product or a website and you, have, uh, you want to highlight specific features of your uh, app or product or website in different videos, say uh, five videos of uh, say uh, 10 or 11 seconds, um, then YouTube can help you with that. Um, you can give uh, in like uh, how fast they the, the 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 ads have to be shown to them. Um, they will start the sequence from if they have uh, engagement with any uh, of your advertisements uh, on YouTube. Um, And uh, it prevents a uh, banner overload. So that's also a really uh, interesting reason why you want to start the video sequence campaign. Another campaign type is true view for action. Uh, this uh, campaign type uses the skippable in-stream ad format. Uh, what is different with if you would uh, uh, create it yourself? Uh, well, it uh, adds this big call to action in the, here on the screen. Uh, on the left uh, bottom are uh, 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 true view for action uh, video ad with a companionable companion ad. Uh, while the image in the middle, the story story time masterclass, uh, we see the side links. It's only visible on mobile, but it's at the end of your video ad. And on the right below, uh, with the Mazda USA uh, image, uh, you see another way of how it's shown. Um, but it's interesting that um, your brand name, display URL, and the large call to action is shown. Uh, the, the companion ad is uh, optional. Uh, you see it's more, uh, more driving action, the, the big CTA and some other things, uh, picture. You get more action out of the normal skippable in stream ad formats. Uh, they also have the true view for shopping uh, ad format, uh, and you can uh, you need a merchant center from there, and you can make a selection uh, of which products you want to show around uh, your advertisement. So it's not a lot uh, you you really have to point it out. Uh, that's a really nice way to show your products uh, to bring people uh, uh, further in your funnel. So they click straight to the product, not to your website or something. This was about it for today. Um,